building is done, we are going to start this area right here. So right here is going to be a little street um, followed by some sidewalk made out of styrene. Um, some concrete area made out of styrene. I'll make some planters made out of styrene. Uh, over here is going to be some grass. Uh, back here will be more or less burnt grass, stuff like that. And then grass right here, maybe a little bit of dirt. Um, we're going to finish up this little area right here, and then we're going to ballast this rail, these two rails, to finish up this area. And then after we get done with that, we're going to work on this downtown area. So stay tuned. Um, I'll be right back and we'll get this going. All right, so we're ready to get this project moving here. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint the road. We're gonna paint all this area that's already painted. Um, so first thing I did is I marked a pencil mark. Let's see if I can get it on film right there. Just for the fun of it, Roughly, I'm going to paint this the same color as this, even though there will be styrene over it. Um, another thing I'm uh, some of the colors I'm using right here are sandstone. Let's see if I can get in the thing. Um, my medium gray from folk art. Some hunter green for the grass area. And rainy day to touch up to make the road a little lighter because that medium gray is going to make it look too dark. Got our paint can or what we use to put the paint in and we have a paintbrush. Now, one thing I did forget to do, and give me a second, put this thing on the tripod. So I know where the grass is gonna be. I am going to mark this with a pencil. Let me get my pencil out. So we'll set the two buildings back into place. Just like that. Get this camera over a little bit. Okay. So, um, grass area is going to be like right around here. So I'm just going to mark with the pencil just like that. Doesn't have to be perfect. That'll kind of tell me where my grassy area is going to be. Move that building out of the way. I'm going to move the tripod again. And we're going to do the same thing on this side of this building. Just like that. And now we can paint this area, paint this little bit of grassy area with the hunter green, this green, this gray, this sand, graystone stand, sand, I'm sorry, paint color. Then we'll glue the ground foam on, some grass, some other foliage, and then we'll work on the concrete. So. Hang tight, let me reposition the camera so we can do this paint thing, and I'll be right back. Alright, as you can see we've got our paint and our little paint tray. So, let's get this going. Now this line right here is just a reference line. It does not have to be perfect, because honestly the... the uh, sidewalk is going to cover a lot of this. Now this is going to take a couple of, just by the looks of this, this is going to take a couple of coats of paint. So we're going to have to let it dry before we do anything with it. So I tried to cake it on a little bit thick just to start the first coat.
Now seeing how it's starting to warm up in Arizona, this should not take that long to dry. All right, let me get a couple coats on this, let it dry, and then I'll come back and we will uh, do the other coat of paint, the light gray, and then we'll work on the grass, and then we'll work on the tan, and we'll get moving with this. All right, so while we wait this for this dark gray to dry, we're going to work on the grass area. I rinsed off my brush, got all the gray off of it. We shake up our our hunter green paint. Now, since we're not going to use a lot, we're not going to pour in a lot. So, trusty our trusty paint can right here. All you want to do is put a little dab of paint, maybe a couple, two small little drops is what I just put in. So let's get painting on this. Sorry for the reflection, the light here. I just noticed that, so you might not be able to see the lines. But I'm, drawing, I'm going, basically going cl as close to the line as possible. Now, I don't know if you guys can see this, but... There's a lot of streaking on this. So I can also go along the edge right here. Just kind of tap it. Let it soak in. Now I suppose you could prime this masonite that I put down. Um, it's up to you guys. I preference really don't. I'll just rather go a couple of coats of paint. Now this acrylic dries somewhat fast because I can now go all over it with a second coat and it's kind of giving me the color I want. Now the reason I color it green is so when I put down my ground foam I don't have to apply a ton of ground foam to it, it'll kind of blend in with that color. So it's kind of like saving resources, I guess, or saving some money. So we're going to use a little bit more green paint. <clears throat> yeah, this stuff's pretty, uh, Pretty thin, so it looks like it's gonna. We're gonna let this dry just a little bit. So we'll go over here on this side right here. All right, guys. So apparently I didn't hit the record button <laughs> to show you how to paint this. Right, I just basically painted it while we're in the green to dry. Um, cleaned off my brush, put some of that sandstone on the in the paint tray. You guys really didn't miss nothing. So anyway, um. What I did do is I did rinse off the brush and I was, I take a paper towel and I get the brush as dry as I can. That way the paint isn't so runny. So let's go back to painting this green because I think the green is dry enough to where we can put another coat on there. Now a lot of You'll see a lot of videos that say you can put ground foam or glue on top of wet paint. You know, that's all fine and dandy. You can do it. I don't, you know, it's up to you. What do you want to do? But I prefer just to let this dry and then 
come over it with uh, with some glue, white diluted glue. So I'll show you how I lay down my ground foam. So anyway, we're gonna let me go paint, rinse off this brush again. Uh, we'll get to painting the roadway again, some rainy rainy day gray, and we'll move on from that. Okay, I'll be right back, guys. Some roads. So since this is kind of watered down, uh, first thing I'm gonna do, I don't want to go too thick on the paint. So what I do is I I dab the paint, and then I just kind of do that to basically it's almost a dry brush technique. But I will use this paintbrush. I'm not going to use a lot of paint, but I kind of want to get it pretty thinned out. And as you can see, I'm just kind of doing this here, pulling the paint from the one paint. So it's mainly really a dry brush technique is what I'm doing here. Because I want to be able to show, I want to lighten up the road, but I also want to have the gray showing through. So we're also going to work on this area because this area came out kind of dark. But as you can see, I'm just... Kind of like dry brushing, I guess you can say. Um, doesn't have to be perfect. Try to keep it going in one direction. And unfortunately, I did get some. Another way to dry brush too is I just did it off camera. Is take this and. Just go like that, and you'll you'll get some of the majority of the paint off. So there we go. So now we're dry brushing this road because this road was still too dark. So we get the color we want. So again, we dab a lot of paint on the paintbrush. Then I just basically take this and go like that to get the majority of the paint off of it. Then I will come over this just like that to get the color I want. My thing is to get the majority of the gray, the dark gray, not to show through. but enough to blend it. Now, I can also, even though I've been painting it, I can still do this, and as you can see, the paint's coming off the paintbrush. Like that, so I'm gonna come back here and scrub a lot of this off. It's basically what I'm doing. If I don't like it the way it is, it's too thick, I just do that. Now, there's the finished road. Let me get this camera off the tripod and I'll show you exactly what it looks like. So anyway, this is what it looks like. And then there's that one. Oh, let's see if I can get this thing into focus here. Oh. All right, there it is, right there. There is the finished product. So, let's get to some ground cover, shall we? So, hang tight. I'm going to be clean up my brushes and get everything prepared to lay ground foam, and we'll go from there. Hang tight. So, we're ready to lay some ground foam, some of the stuff you're going to need. Um, the essentials. Start out with the glues. 
white Elmer school glue or regular old school glue you're gonna want some cheap old hairspray and a wetting agent this is 70% ISO pro alcohol with a blend of water I keep a warm cup of water handy that's so I can put my brush in it so the glue doesn't dry on the brush a cheap old paintbrush or an old paintbrush um, if you're going to use a paintbrush I think this cost me like three dollars at Walmart don't get the dollar ones because I'm I find with the dollar ones the little bristles come off and they just don't work we're gonna use some grass we're gonna use some actually we're not gonna use the burnt grass we're gonna use some blended turf so we'll put that away and last but not least Good old dirt, just off the side of the road, and a and a strainer to lay the dirt. Now I also went ahead and taped off everything. Let me get this thing off the tripod so we can show you guys. So I went in and I taped off all the track that it's going to be glued around so I don't get any glue on it and I left the roads the way it is like that. So get this thing back on the tripod and let's get to laying ground foam shall we? Let me reposition the camera so you get a better angle so we can get a better angle on this and we'll go from there. Alright, let's get started guys. Move a couple things around really quick. Now some of this you're not going to see because it'll be kind of off camera because I can't get it in order to show you guys what I'm doing. I just can't get it all on camera. So we'll get started on this and keep moving. So. Let's let's get started. First thing you want to do is you want to take your glue and I just dab it on. Anywhere you don't want glue to go, just kind of avoid it. Now, it's not going to be easy to not get glue where you don't want to because of the way it is. I guess that made no sense, but I guess it makes sense to me. So we'll run a bead of glue down here. Because when I lay ballast in there, it's not going to lay all... It's, the ballast won't cover it all, so... The wonderful thing about Elmer's white glue, it takes a while to dry. I'm only going to do this little section right here. Now this is going to be kind of tough with the paintbrush. The paintbrush is pretty thick. So if you lay a lot of glue down, don't worry about it. Because the more the better. This is my opinion. It sticks a lot better. Alright, so we got the white glue down. Take our paintbrush. And I first start by dabbing because this is closest to the road, so we'll start over here. So I just basically take my paintbrush, and basically a painting action is what I'm doing. Now you're all probably wondering, well, what the heck's the water for? Well, the water is for when, if you're doing a large area, also, now it's going to, so when you're done laying all this, the white glue down, you stick the paintbrush. All right, sorry about that, guys. Uh, camera turned off because batteries died, so I had to replace batteries real quick. So I don't remember where I left off, but um, continue laying this glue down. So I try to be careful around my roadways, try to get it as close to the edge as possible. Take your time when you're doing this stuff because 
it just makes the, the layout look a lot nicer. So as you can see, I'm just kind of like dabbing. And then over here, that thing in the background of whatever is going off at my house, I don't know what it is, some electronic device, one of my kids probably freaking left on my teenager. But that's here and there, here and there, I guess. So let me show you over here. I'm going to move the, the tripod really quick. Okay, so over here where you're going to glue, but there's some scenery. All I do, I'm not careful as far as getting glue on that already scenery because we're just going to cover it back up. Now, there's two ways to do this to make it look natural. Is to put the dirt down first, then to put the ground foam. I mean, naturally, dirt is first, then ground foam, but... This I'm gonna actually do a little reversed. I'm gonna do ground foam because I wanna highlight some of the dirt patches. Now that can of water or that cup of water that I was talking about, let me tilt this camera up, is for this. We've done all our gluing. We spread all our glue around. Now that's what the water's for. That way the brush does not get hard. Or the glue doesn't dry on the brush and the brush is useless. It's, it's a pain in the butt. Trust me, I've been doing this for years. Uh, can contest to it. So, next thing we're going to do is we're going to lay some ground foam down. So, first we're going to start off with this this blended turf. So, we just kind of take the blended turf go pretty thick with it. We're not too particular with it. And go personally I don't like this this one too much but honestly it's all I got right now so as you can see getting all over the roadway which is no big deal because we'll come back and clean all that up now I already have some mixed stuff up I think it's blended burnt grass so we'll throw some of that stuff on there nice and thick Gotta use it all up anyways because I need it for the dirt, for the grass. So voila, there we go. I'm gonna step in front of the camera because I forgot to get a paintbrush out. I'm gonna show you what the paintbrush is for. <clears throat> so now I take one of these little paintbrushes, like right here, it's a one inch paintbrush. Anywhere I don't want this turf as far as like the, the rails and the road, I just use it basically as a broom if you want to call it that. So anywhere I don't want this stuff to stick, I just kind of move it away. Now we'll take our green grass. Put it in here. Put some over here. I mean, basically, we're layering this now. 
whatever you don't use, you put back in your little container. I use Ziploc bags. And then I'm going to come over with this little paintbrush and I'm going to sweep away a lot of this stuff. Now mind you, when you go to put the, the wetting agent on, a lot of this is going to like fly away. It's next, when I found out, it just flies away. So now we're going to go with the, with the dirt. I had a friend of mine ask me, how do I get the dirt to dry so it doesn't look like mud? And this is the technique. So, if you're watching, Mike, this is how you do it. So, I tap it. I don't know if you guys can see it. Just like so, anywhere I want the dirt. just to represent little patches of dirt here and there. Also to blend in a lot of this. Also covers up a lot of the insecurities, or I guess the impurities, whatever the hell you want to call it. So, oh, you know, I forgot to put ground foam over there. That was smart, Arthur. So another thing I'll do is I'll tap where the ground foam was pretty thick. I'll tap stuff like this. Just to straighten it out. To flatten it out so it doesn't look so clumpy and lumpy, I guess. So we need to get a little bit of ground foam back in here. And take your time doing this. I mean, there's no rush in doing this. So, again, we'll take this brush and we'll just kind of dab stuff on here and there. There we go. All right, now that that is done. So our next step is now to apply the wetting agent. Oh, no, hold on, can't apply the wetting agent yet because we've got a lot of dirt and stuff. Again, I need this pretty much cleaned off because this is where the styrene is going to go. And the styrene, we don't want the styrene to look out of ordinary. All right, now that's complete. Now if I were to sneeze or do something like that, this whole thing would go flying everywhere. Again, by experience. <laughs> so next we're gonna do our wetting agent. All right, so first thing I do, instead of just going straight on and starting spraying it, I kind of go off, I'm off camera, but I'm gonna, let's see if I can get what I'm gonna do here. So, all right, I'm gonna take my spray gun and I'm gonna get it going. I'm gonna get the, I'm gonna get the water flowing because the fact that if I were to do it that way, then right directly above my scenery, my scenery is gonna go flying everywhere. So here we go, we're gonna do some wetting agent stuff. So all you do is I hold it up at an angle pretty high. I don't know if it's on camera because I can't see. Uh, nope, I hold it above basically camera angle. I'd say about, just above your head or eye level, and then I will, like it's raining. That's how I put this on. Now you have to use a wetting agent for those of you that have never laid scenery down, due to the fact that once you go spray hairspray on it or something else like white glue, it will not, It'll clump up and leave a lot of 
blank spots in there. So with all that done, as I can now, I know it's kind of wet, pretty soaking wet. We're gonna take our hairspray. Hairspray will hold the whole thing together. And it looks like this one's not working, so we're gonna have to use a different one. There it is. And as you can see, I'm trying to get it to where it's nice and soaking wet. I want this stuff to absorb pretty good into there. Just a couple of things of that. So now we just gotta let it dry and we'll go on. Another thing I'm gonna show you, um, the reason you use a wetting agent is there's another technique you can use and you can use a 50-50% water alcohol or water white glue, not water alcohol, sorry. And you can use this to hold stuff in. So, um, for example, hang tight, let me get some ground foam. And we'll put some little bushes and stuff in here and hold them in place. Okay, I got some clump foliage here. Um, we're just going to make a little bush thing right here. Let me see. I kicked the camera. Sorry about that. Um, we're going to put these guys right here. Now, you can glue these individually if you want. But I found somewhat of an easier way. Take our wedding agent. Lift this stuff up. And then you take your water and glue combination. Shake it up. dab it on there. Now as you can see what it is doing, what the alcohol is doing is, is making it adhere. It's breaking up the glue as you can see. Now when that glue dries it's going to drew it's going to dry completely clear. You're not going to see it. Um, you can also use it for like small little rocks and pebbles. So for example, give me a second, I will go get some bunch of rock from when I sifted the thing. So let's say I want to put some rock along the rail right here or along the road, which we will do. So I just sprinkle some, a little bit of rock like right in there just to give it some look, to give it a decent look or guess if you want to say. Now all I do is I take this water alcohol combination again. And I do that. Now this stuff works really well for ballast. I'm going to tell you that guys. I'll tell you that right now. So anyway. Um, hang tight. We'll let this dry. I'll show you how to clean up some roadways. Um, one thing I do do. Right after I do this. I peel off this, this tape. Because if you. I find that if you let it dry completely then it kind of takes up some of your scenery especially the way I put all my scenery so we're just gonna pull the tape off just as so and there we go finished product guys. All right, so this is what it looks like So that's how I lay my ground foam. Now I will clean all this up right here. 
So I'll get that out of the way. I'll clean all this up right here just by taking my hand and scraping it all off. Clean it up. Very basic. And then swipe it away. All done. So I hope this was kind of helpful as far as laying ground foam.